Hi guys, Paul here from Belgium Performance Coaching with our final video in our seminar series. So this one's the final topic of the day, metrics, measurement, expectations, and tracking. So this is the last uh, lecture of the day because it's probably the least demanding in terms of intellectual understanding of the topic, like biomechanics is a more complex topic, but it doesn't mean it's any less worthwhile. Most business owners will tell you that metrics and measurement are much more important than understanding biomechanics. I think from a business perspective, they're probably right, but from training clients, definitely not. So, but still we need to know them and I think they're very, very important overall, equal in the scope of running a training business, not just being a trainer versus being a business owner. Having a training business, which is what most of us do, it's equally important. So the metrics, the measurement, the expectations and the tracking are kind of how we're going to keep our clients engaged in the training process. It's a part of the training process that our clients are probably also going to find the hardest as well. So metrics are super important to figure out exactly how the client is responding to the stimulus of their diet, their stress, their lifestyle, etc. Like for example, right now I'm wearing a whoop band that tells me you know, how my heart rate variability is moment to moment and what my heart rate's doing, how I sleep, etc., etc. All those metrics have value. It's just what we need to do with identifying our metrics to the clients and which ones have value for them. So a lot, of a, client, a lot of clients have problems with their weight, for example. They might find it psychologically stressful to take their weight. They might not care about their sleep. They might not care about their weight. So what we need to do as trainers is we need to identify the metrics that we want to identify, uh, that our client wants to identify and that's going to give value to them so then we can prove our value by the improvement in said metrics. Measurement is how we're going to take care of that, how we're actually going to measure that. So we need to come up with systematic, repeatable, and easy to do options of repeating our measurements. So that one could be like, all right, cool. Every second Monday we get a tape measure out, we take our waist circumference, for an example. It's a very, very good way of tracking that particular metric. That's how we should measure it. Weight should be every morning, you know, naked after going to the bathroom. Expectations is the next part, which is making sure that our clients' expectations of their, the improvements in their metrics are realistic. So being able to tell our clients, okay, cool, hey, Janice, hey, Karen, uh, Karen, because that's the name, that every, it's fashionable to pick on these days. Hey, Karen, uh, notice, uh, so how much weight are you looking to lose? Oh, I'm looking to lose five kilos a week, okay. So Karen's gonna be disappointed even if she loses one kilo a week, which is a fantastic result. So a lot of the time making sure we know what our client's expectations are and aligning those expectations with reality is a really, really important thing to do. And then there's finally tracking, which is more looking at nutrition rather than measurement. So looking at how we're going to make, monitor that over the long term. So in this part of the workshop, what I'm gonna do with students there is go through every single one of these particular things that we can look at, the value of said metric, the way to measure it, the expectation that it should have, and then how we can look at improving it over the long term. So what behavior we're going to implement. This is a really important part of training, really fun part of training, uh, of working with people as well, because then you can start seeing progress and it's real, people get really, really excited by seeing progress. What we want to do is when we're looking at things like movement screen for our clients, that's for us, it's objective. For them, it's more of a subjective thing. It's easier for them to get into a deadlift. For biomechanics, helping them change their exercise selection for them not to feel pain and for them to feel the target muscle is very subjective. Uh, programming and metrics are where the numbers that we'll see are very objective. So what you want to do as a trainer is really combine both the subjective and the objective equally to be able to give your clients the best possible experience. So guys, this is a really short one today. I just wanted you to think about how you are doing subjective measures and objective measures to help your clients get the most out of their training. Thanks heaps, guys. Looking forward to speaking to you all soon.